Next we will discuss the phasor diagram for the transformer. We will discuss for the exact equivalent circuit as well as the approximate equivalent circuit. We will start with the secondary side voltage V2. That means we are considering V2 to be the reference phasor. Okay. So we will draw this horizontally. This is V2. Next we have to draw I2. Okay, once we draw I2, then we can get the drop across this elements, then we can get E2. From E2 again, you can get E1 using the voltage ratios. Okay, and then again KBL, we can get the all other phasors. So now out I2, how you can draw? You can draw if you know the load power factor angle. Okay, that means nothing but the voltage, dif the phase difference between the V2 and I2. So this, if you say it is theta, Okay, then I2 is going to be lagging V2 by theta 2. Okay, this is the current. Next, the drop across R2 and X2. The drop across R2, it will be in phase with I2, I2 into R2. So, this you can draw here. Okay, so here you have I2 into R2. And what about I2 into X2? The drop across X2 it is going to be leading the current phasor by 90 degrees. Okay, so this is I2 X2. Now what will be this V2 plus I2 R2 plus I2 X2. You can see here V2 plus I2 R2 plus I2 X2 this is going to be E2. Okay, so if you are joining this, this phasor from here to here, this is going to be E2. Now from E2, how will you get E1? E2 and E1 are going to be in phase. What is the relation here? E1 by E2, it is going to be N1 by N2, where N1 is number of turns of primary and N2 is number of turns of secondary. Okay. So these are going to be in phase. We will assume that it is a step down transformer. That means E1 is going to be greater than E2. Okay, so e, E1 you can simply draw in the same direction, it is going to be the magnitude is going to be a little larger. Okay, so once you know E1, then you can focus on the primary side parameters. Okay, now we want the drop across this. Okay, and if we want the drop across this, we need I1, but I1 is in turn equal to I0 and I2 dash. Okay. So we first need to draw I2 dash and I0. I2 dash is anyways simple, you can get from the current ratio. What is I2 dash by I2? This is going to be N2 by N1. Okay. So basically I2 dash is going to be in the same phase as I2, but the magnitude since it is a step down voltage transformer, the current is going to be stepped up. That means I2 dash is going to be lesser than I2. So the same thing you can represent in the phasor diagram. Here this we will take as I2 dash because cannot be small. If you draw smaller than that, it will become clumsy, right? So this we will take I2 dash and this we will take I2. Okay. So now we have I2 dash. Next we want I0. Now I0 you can see from this diagram and we know anyways that I0 it can be divided into IM and IC and IM is going to what? It is going to lag E1 by 90 degrees pure inductor right now where is e1 e1 is this phasor okay so lagging 90 degrees here we can draw the magnetizing component okay so this is 90 degrees this will be i m what about i c the core loss component that is going to be in phase with e1 okay and its magnitude is going to be very small so this is i c now if you add both of them then you are going to get what? The no load current I0. Now next what we have? We have I0 and I2 dash we have marked. Now I1 will be the phasor sum of I0 and I2 dash. Okay. So here we have I2 dash here and I0 here. So adding these two you are going to get current I1. Now once you got I1, then what is left out? You have to find the drop across R1 and X1 and from there you can find out V1. Okay. 
so drop across r1 will be in phase with i1 so we will draw this here at the phase tip of e1 right so this is i1 and parallel to that there is going to be i1 r1 okay and what about i1 x1 so this is going to be 90 degrees leading the current okay so now when you add e1 e1 i1 r1 and i1 x1 what you're going to get v1 so here e1 plus i1 r1 plus i1 x1 you can get you join this you're going to get v1 okay so this is the complete phasor diagram of the exact equivalent circuit now what is the angle between i1 and v1 this is the power factor of the primary side okay so what are the relations that we used here we use the voltage and the current ratios as well as kvl and kcl right so what was the secondary side kvl e2 is equal to i2 r2 plus i2 x2 plus v2 okay and once we got e2 then we found out e1 from this relation and once we got e1 we drew i m and i c okay i m will be lagging e1 by 90 degrees and i c is going to be in phase with e1 okay and after that we drew i t dash i2 dash using the current relation okay now if you add both of them then you will get i naught so here we are applying the kcl this is kvl and this is kcl i naught plus i2 dash is equal to i1 and once again applying kvl on the primary side v1 is equal to i1 r1 plus i1 x1 plus e2 okay now we will draw the phasor diagram for approx e equivalent circuit okay the second approx equivalent circuit so what did it have it had only one resistance and one inductance so since for the phasor diagram we usually start with the v2 voltage we will take the circuit referred to the secondary side so this will be v2 this current is going to be i2 and what about this this is r equivalent 2 and this is x equivalent 2 what are these r equivalent 2 is equal to r1 dash plus r2 and x equivalent 2 is equal to x1 dash plus x2 okay and this current is going to be i1 dash and this voltage is going to be v1 dash now if you are starting from v2 then you can draw the horizontal phasor this is going to be phasor v2 now what we will do we will draw the phasor diagrams previously we drew only for lagging power factor for the exact equivalent circuit right here we will draw for the unity power factor as well as the leading power factor first we will start off with the lagging power factor okay so this current is going to lag the voltage by some theta 2 angle now the drop across r equivalent to this is going to be in phase with i2 and across the inductance it is going to be 90 degrees leading okay so here you have i2 r equivalent to and here you have i2 x equivalent to okay so if you are adding all of this this drop this voltage drop and this what you will get v1 dash so you can draw here v1 dash this is what lagging power factor and what will happen to the unity power factor here you are going to have v2 is going to be as it is no change and i2 is going to be in phase with v2 okay then what will happen to the drop across the resistance this is also going to be in phase okay and next the drop across the reactance is going to be like this 90 degrees leading and if you add all of these phases you are going to get v1 dash and finally the leading power factor 
here also v2 will be same as it is we are starting from v2 i2 is going to be leading so we can take i2 bar something like this so this angle is theta 2 now what will be i2 so it's going to be like this oh, sorry i2 r equivalent to the drop across resistance so is going to be like this and the drop across reactance is going to be like this okay now what will be the voltage primary side voltage this will be v1 dash so you can see that v1 dash it can be lesser than v2 depending on the leading power factor angle